Hey guys, today we are looking at just an amazing bike. Okay, I've reviewed the recent Mueller Delight with New Vinci in the past with a single battery, and we're looking at the signature. This is the recent Mueller Delight GT signature. GT, it's kind of like grand touring. It means it's got a traditional derailleur cassette paired with larger tires. Uh, for better stability and a little bit more comfort. And these awesome fenders, SKS 65 millimeters in width. Uh, it was really surprising because when I was doing the specs for this, I, I realized like, wow, this has, a, this has a boost hub, like a little bit longer. Instead of 100 millimeters, it's 110, okay? And then in the rear, instead of 142, it's 148. And in fact, I think the, the original back here has 135. So, you know, those spacings, they all matter. This is like mountain bike setup here. And we have a 15 millimeter through axle in the front and a 12 millimeter in the rear, quick release on both. So if you need to do some service or, you know, take these off to reduce some weight, you can. And that's awesome. Part of it is because it has a traditional cassette derailleur versus the New Vinci. I really like the New Vinci. It's, it's easy to shift at any time. You don't have to worry about mashing the same way that you do uh, with this chain, you know, jumping from, from one sprocket to the next. But with 11 speeds, I think it's 11 to 42 teeth on that, you have littler jumps and the Bosch performance line motors have shift detection. So it's just an excellent setup. And in this case, you have electronic shifting. So it's just really crisp. You've got a double action here. So you can click, click, and it goes t -t -t. And it's just high precision, super fast, crisp. You can actually adjust the speed on that. This has everything from the electronic shifting with XTR level components that are relatively lightweight, a little bit more durable, uh, all the way to the Bosch CX motor. That's their high performance mountain motor to Fox factory suspension air on the front and the rear. It's just awesome. DPS, that's dual piston system, I believe. It's neat to see a full suspension like urban electric bike like this with a suspended rear rack that can handle panniers. You've got those fenders, so it's gonna keep you dry. You've got reflective sidewalls on both of the tires. Lights, 100 uh, lumens. This is the IQ from Bush and Mueller with side shining. Can you kind of see that coming out the side a little bit? It's a lot more visible at night, but just fantastic. And this is actually directed down, kind of a German standard. Uh, that's, it's a little bit more thoughtful on like, are you blinding traffic? It's, it's almost, it's more like a car, you know? This thing is, it's almost, it just feels fantastic riding, uh, going over the bumps. We're in the Brooklyn Navy Yard here and there, there were quite a few potholes and you know puddles. It was raining earlier today and this bike had no problem. I've been riding around on some of the other bikes, including some recent Mueller bikes like the Tinker. It's, you know, smaller 20 inch diameter wheels, uh, front suspension only and I was kind of bracing myself for those bumps and no problem on this. Now you are paying a lot for the Delight, okay? In the original with one battery was expensive. This one being signature, you're getting the electronic shifting, you're getting carbon fiber handlebar, you're getting two batteries by default, so it's doubling your range. And I believe they're signing these, but it's like $11,099, so it's, it's not cheap. However, you do get the two-year comprehensive Bosch warranty. You get great support from shops like Propel and a few others that are starting to pop up in the United States. This is Chris Nolte. Hey guys. Uh, you're the founder of Propel, and I believe you're kind of friends with these guys. You helped to connect with them at Eurobike and actually establish this brand in the United States a year ago, right? Yeah, I've been, been really excited in working with them, and their products are really made for environments like New York City and other places and we're excited to have them over and a product like this it's, it's pretty amazing the delight has always been very popular for us and the signatures really uh pretty wild kind of as as it, they as heiko says it was kind of his opportunity to play and just put whatever he wants on the bike and and this was the, after 25 years he's able to make the bike that you know he wants exactly so they've been so. around as a company for 25 years i believe their first bike was the birdie like a folding bicycle that's right yeah non-electric and and these days they've transitioned completely to electric and they're they're using bosch only because of how reliable it is how responsive that was you know i've met the guy and, and spoken with him right um yep. so that's that's neat it's just it's cool to see when these companies like pull out all the stops 
as someone who reviews electric bikes that are like a thousand dollars to me it's like oh a thousand but when I'm, i mentioned that to him i'm like ah, oh, it's expensive he's like yep yeah, this is this is the best and if you're replacing your car and you want the comfort and reliability and the range that's a big deal you know one of those bosch power packs right there these are the power pack 500s okay so they're the, they're the higher capacity ones just one of those is 800 900 bucks all on its own so we're looking at like two thousand dollars worth of batteries um i love that you you get an abus folding lock, this 6000 series that comes with the bike, and I believe it's key to like to those batteries. The Bosch system actually balances the two, so it draws both down slowly, and that's going to be maybe a little, a little bit better on the cells. You're not just like constantly draining this one and only occasionally tapping into this one. It, dra it drains them both. But if you're someone who wants to tour and maybe you even have three or four batteries, these are both going to be draining down. It's not like you get one at a time with a spare. So those are the considerations, especially now that we're seeing some other uh, dual battery setups. Um, I believe Shimano has, has something like this. Um, a a actually, what was that? That was the the Focus bikes. Right, yeah. We, we, and it was a proprietary the, battery. That's right. That's right. right, so it's it's something that's kind of rare. Not too many bikes even come with this, and, and I feel like Bosch has done a really good job. The display actually shows both batteries. We'll get into that in, in, in a minute. Uh, I want to call out these nice Bibia rubber straps, highly adjustable. I believe it's 40 pounds or 44 pounds, 20 kilograms on this rear rack. And I, Chris, is this this like an attachment point or is that just for style? Like what's that, That is that a pannier blocker? Uh, it's, it's partly for style actually. We've had some discussions trying to figure out exactly what the situation is there. One thing I did learn recently while I was in Germany though, if you have Ortlieb bags, yeah. one thing you can do is take the bottom part where the hook is and actually unscrew it and flip it over and it enables you to hook on this more properly. Huh. So it's a, a, a way to adjust that. That was something I learned actually visiting one of their early shops in Germany that does a lot of these bikes specifically. Kind of interesting. Very interesting. Very cool. Some of the other hardware that I notice when I'm going through all the details on these bikes, I, I like the Ergon ergonomic saddle here. We've got a 34.9 millimeter, like extra thick seat post. And if you were someone who wanted to change that, a lot of times there's shims you can use, but I don't think you need to with a full suspension bike like this. And down here we got the Pletcher ESGE kickstand adjustable length, really high quality. It stays out of the way. You know, it's not going to collide with those crank arms right there. 180 millimeters on these hydraulic disc brakes. And these ones have the heat sinks. Okay, so they're a little bit nicer. They also have the Shimano XTR two finger levers with tool free adjustable reach. So you can bring those in if you're riding on a day with gloves or maybe you're someone who has the smaller hands. This does come in three sizes and we're on the small medium right here. It's like 19.5. Right. Yeah, or 49. Yeah, 49 C. And then what, do you know the other sizes? Uh, the other size are 54 centimeter or 50 cent 56 centimeter is the largest size. Okay, good to know. And coming back to the weight, this is like 68.2.3 pounds. It's definitely heavier, but part of that's because you got that really, you know, stiff, rigid rear swing arm. You've got the double batteries going on. I was surprised because it's only like two and a half pounds more than the other Delight. And I was like, well, why? Like that battery weighs 5.8 pounds all on its own. And I think that part of it is coming back to the size difference, uh, the lighter, lighter weight components, and then this carbon fiber bar. I mean, you know, it, it all adds up. It makes a difference. Uh, but again, this is feature complete. Between the fenders and the lights and everything, you can just get out there and, and really feel safe, which is something I think about. Love that there's this texturized slap guard built right in because on the Bosch chain ring, it is a little bit smaller. This is 18 tooth. It spins at two and a half revolutions for every crank arm revolution. Very responsive, gets really good grab on that chain. And you've got a Miranda alloy, kind of a guard to keep your pant leg from, from rubbing or getting snagged. It helps it slough over the chain. And then it also acts as a guide. The thing is, there is a little bit of uh, mechanical resistance in there because there's a gearbox. So, you know, you're getting maybe some efficiency in, in how, how this operates for the motor. You're empowering the motor, but there's a little bit more, a little bit of resistance. I'm trying to be really fair here. Uh, I've been a fan of Bosch for a long time because you can, you can spin up to 120 RPM where some of the other systems, it limits around 100. And even, you know, the Yamaha PWX, it's like a mountain motor, 
I think to, to compete with the Bosch CX motor, it seems like it just fades a little bit more towards that 120. Not a huge deal for a lot of people, but someone like me, I have a sensitive knee and I like to spin fast. So I, I feel like this motor empowers me. I don't have to shift gears as frequently in order to hit and maintain that 20 mile per hour top speed. This is a class one electric bike. So coming back to these, these Schwabi tires, really nice Supermoto X. They're just, they're, they're fatter, you know? They're, they're gonna give you that stability as you're rolling down the road. And that's something I, I appreciate, especially in a city where you come across different types of terrain and you're dealing with more weight. Okay, it's 30 to 55 PSI on these. And then these are 27.5 by 2.4. So again, not quite plus size, but in order to have space for those big fenders that really do offer great coverage. You know, it comes all the way down. We were going through some puddles, I'm not wet. They needed the, you know, the boost and stuff. That's. It's fantastic uh, the way that's set up. Ergon grips, they are locking. These ones are a little bit sportier, almost like mountain bike versus full ergonomic. We got the flick bell going on. We've even got these fabric bottle cage adapter things. It's, it's really cool. You just like pull the bottle up like this. They mount out of the way because there really wasn't room for it down here in the main triangle. And that's the case with a lot of bikes. So I, I love that Reese and Mueller went out of the way to find a solution. But keep in mind, you know, if you turn really hard, there's a little bit of collision happening up here. That doesn't happen too much, but again, I want to be thorough, want to be fair. Um, I think that's that's pretty pretty comprehensive. Gloss black on this frame, and I've seen sort of that silver and then a brown on the traditional delight. Chris, is there anything I'm missing? Uh, yeah, just um, yeah. This is the only one that's available in that gloss black color. That one, the other delight is available in the white as well. Awesome. Well, we are getting soaked right now. We might move to a dry place, but as we do, I want to call it these pedals. Not my favorite. They're sort of alloy, and then they've got this rubber and plastic, and they can start to slip when it rains like this, but the rest of your body's going to be pretty dry. Yeah, is there a place we can... I don't know. <laughs> okay, we're going to take our, our ride test a little bit early right now. Just hop on these things because it's raining. It is a water resistant system, so you can see the uh, the display here. It's not going to have a problem. The batteries, the motor sealed pretty well. Taking it up to turbo. Splash. Oh yeah, getting a little bit wet. <laughs> Taking the, pu the puddles head on. Oh yeah, I think Chris has the right idea. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! <laughs> this is fantastic. Again, the, the fender action working pretty well. Of course, you still want to be careful. As I said, the pedals can get a little bit slippery and even the tires can slide out on you. Now we got a wind tunnel going on, drying us off. Okay, so coming back down to this motor, this is uh, a mountain bike specific motor that Bosch has released, but so many of the recent Mueller bikes offer this as an option. And I think, you know, it offers a higher torque and that's great when you have a heavier frame. I would say, you know, most electric bikes these days, they're in the 50 to 55 pound range. So to be at kind of a 68, it's definitely higher, but I, I think that comes back to the build quality. This is almost, it's, it's more like a car. You really feel stable and, and, and comfortable with that. This motor offers 350 watts to 570 watts in the USA. It's really, you know, kind of a 250 watt rated motor in Europe. Uh, very capable, up to 75 newton meters of torque. It's measuring your rear wheel speed. It's a little magnet that passes, pedal cadence and pedal torque a thousand times per second. So, you know, super responsive. That chain ring, you might've seen it there on the ride test. It starts and stops extremely quickly and never feels like you're getting out of control. And that's important for the mountain biking setting we were talking about earlier, because you might be at the edge of a cliff or you know on unstable terrain and if that motor is getting out of control that you don't want that so again the motor i feel is very capable and i keep teasing you know they've got this new graphic it's kind of like black stripes and it reminds me of 
Mike Tyson's tattoo on his face, kind of tribal. Um, it's neat. But a bike that comes in pretty solid, traditional colors. You know, you look at this, it's like black, silver, straight lines, organized. It's kind of the German thing. They had a little fun with that sticker, you know? So I feel like that's cool. Coming back to the battery packs, each one of these offers 36 volts, 13.4 amp hours. So, you know, it's still running at 36 volts, but you're coming up to like 26.8 amp hours, you know, total. That's a thousand, I think it's one kilowatt hour, a thousand watt hours. Fantastic, great range. And these bikes do have the display that, that gives you like a range estimate. Right now we're looking at right here, it says 23 miles. We do not have a full battery and that's in turbo. If I arrow down a little bit with the minus key to eco, 72 miles. So, you know, back at the full review, I, I list out like maybe 40 to 140 or 50 to 150. It, it kind of, your mileage may vary. If these tires are really efficient. They, they roll smoothly but the bike is heavier. And if you're fighting wind and rain and hills, your mileage may vary, right? Okay, so we've covered the batteries. I love that they are removable. You can charge them on or off the frame. And what's really cool about this system is you only have to plug it in in one place. There it is right there. See this little tab? When you plug the charger in right there, it, it, it fills it simultaneously. You don't have to worry about filling a battery and then changing the plug and forgetting it, it it's built in. I love that. You've got these uh, LED indicators on the side of the battery. So this battery is full and this one's only one tick out of five. The locking cores, as I mentioned, are really solid. The batteries weigh about 5.8 pounds. So you could take those off if you needed to put this bike on a car rack. And that's something that, that I, I usually do. I also like that this Bosch display panel, this is the Intuvia, it's removable. Okay, so if you're parking somewhere and you're a little bit worried about sun, rain, snow, or vandalism, or e even someone doesn't mean to, if they park their bike next to yours, it could, it could scrape with the handlebars. So I like that. And it has a micro USB port built into the side. And that puts out about five volts at one amp, I believe. So you could plug into that and you could charge your phone or GPS unit like Strava or you know, maybe music on the go, an additional light, or you know, maybe you've got some holiday lights on your bike just for fun to be super visible. This, this display will let you do that. Interacting with the display is pretty easy as you saw me earlier, pressing the plus or minus and this I button to cycle through. I'm gonna boot this up one more time. Hopefully you're not getting too much wind noise. I'm trying to help you out. There is, thank you, Chris. There is a slight backlight going on, this glow, like light blue, it's really nice. You've got battery indicator up top, five ticks, four levels of assist with a little power chart that goes up and down, speed in the middle, and then all these other readouts. And the readouts you cycle by pressing I there or over here. So those readouts include odometer, uh, which gear? Oh yeah, that's right, because we're, we're using electronic shifting. So when I, when I click that, I forget that they're integrated. There we go, four, and then back down to five. And you can do the multi-shift, here we go. Yeah, double. This is so cool. Even though it sounds clicky, it's really just sending an electronic signal to the back. So the other readout with the eye is trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time. And then that's the battery infographic I was talking about. See how one battery is full and one is almost, it's like at the last tick. It's neat that you get all that information with one display. I mean, it's giving you shifting information, battery information, motor information. I, I'd feel like, I mean, it's just one of my favorite systems. It, I've become really familiar with it over the years, testing it on so many bikes. And there's even this walk mode at the top. So if I press that and then I hold plus, it would walk the bike slowly forward. And then coming back to that final menu is range. And we already showed that as I, as I select different like assist levels, it's using the remaining battery capacity and my last mile of, of ride. Like it's actually kind of calculating that data and it's giving me a real time feedback. Absolutely love that. And then I think uh, the final thing to mention is that if we go up to sport mode, see how it says EMTB? I'm gonna do that again. Sport EMTB. That's because this is the Bosch CX motor and they've just introduced in 2017 electric mountain bike mode, which is basically they felt like you're riding on the bike, you're already thinking about shifting, you're thinking about navigating the terrain and steering and just staying on your bike. Let's, let's try to make the motor as thought 
as, as like intuitive as possible. It just kind of functions on its own. So you don't have to worry about how, how much power it's giving you. It's more like a torque sensor in that mode. So EMTB mode, you don't have to worry about this. It's giving you like no power all the way up to full power based on how hard you're pedaling and what the terrain is like. Does that sound right, Chris? That's right, yeah. Awesome, yeah, so I feel like we've done our best. I realize it's a little bit rushed uh, going through some of this stuff. I might put the uh, camera on the bike to get some, some more shots and we should go back and get that charger. We rushed out, <laughs> I think we left, we left the charger Oh, you brought it. Oh my gosh, this guy. Great job. I'm, I'm so glad because I, I meant to mention this. When you have these higher capacity batteries, it takes longer to charge. And then when you have two of them, like, oh man, you know, that's a lot. So the Bosch charger, it weighs 1.7 pounds, not too heavy. It's pretty compact. It's really, really nice here with that, that strap. It puts out four amps instead of two amps. Yeah, and that's great, especially if you're touring. And this would be such a cool touring platform if, you know, loaded up with all your gear and the lights for safety. And it's just, I mean, yeah, it's expensive, but you get what you pay for with these things. And I, again, the comfort for me as someone with a neck and, and back sensitivity is a big deal. So I don't mean to oversell it or hype it or whatever. I'm just kind of saying I can appreciate this is like a supercar. You know, this is one of the nicest electric bikes. It's pretty exciting. Apparently, this is number one off the line. This so one right here? Oh, pretty, yeah. Uh, pretty excited to have this, uh, this here right now. It's neat, and it's it's an honor. It's I mean, We're thankful here in the United States. A lot of this technology comes from Europe to begin with. Right. And then we've got one of their more premium brands now. Um, and we are in New York City. You know, people have maybe a little more money, and a lot of these people use their bikes as cars because it's so right. crowded around here. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, so I, I mean, there you go, guys. That's it. Uh, let's go out and ride some more. Hey guys, the rain is slowing down a bit. From this angle, you should be able to see that rear suspension as well as the chain ring starting and stopping. Remember that it spins 2.5 times for every crank arm revolution. Keep an eye when I start and stop pedaling how quickly it responds. You might also notice some noise. The Mosh CX motor in particular, it's high power and it kind of has this <laughs> when you're in the highest power and you're pedaling fast, which is of course, that's my favorite uh, mode. So anyway, let's do it. purposely doing some hard brake tests there. Also, uh, you know, you can hear the shift detection working. I, I was noticing it like pause uh, it, and just ease off so that we wouldn't be mashing that chain and those sprockets. I'm going a little hard here on purpose to demonstrate the capability, but I think it's performing really well, you know, better than a lot of mid drives. They don't have that, that extra detection. I think part of it is the electronic shifting is working really well too. Okay guys, another good angle on the chain ring and the front. I wanted to show you the fender. You're on the rear swing arm, so you might notice the camera going up and down as we hit some of these bumps. And we're just gonna head out of the Navy Yard, right? Do some stopping, some starts, should be fun.
like a speed limiter digital sign back there and it said 19 miles per hour. My experience is that this gets close to 20. I've had a hard time pedaling beyond that just because it is a bit heavier, right? You're dealing with the extra weight and it's windy and stuff right now. My body is very dry. My feet are a little wet. The lower portions of my shin are also wet just because it kind of splashes to the side and we're going through some deep puddles here. But I hope that's helped you, given you a, a perspective on what it would be like to commute with this thing. Might just want to have an extra pair of shoes at the office. Hey guys, a bit of serendipity. I ran into my other friend, Chris. How's it going, man? Hey man, how are you? I'm great. And you're riding one of the recent Mueller bikes. This is the full suspension load. And what's in the cargo bin? Vino. Nice, some wine. Beautiful, yeah. man. Yeah, this guy, do you want to do a shout out? Like what your business is or something? Or is it? Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an import company that uh, sells wine to um, small wine sales and restaurants. That's fantastic, yeah. man. I've seen you around town a couple times lately because you're you're here working out of the Navy Yard, and today it's raining. And so, you know, I, can you tell me about your getup? Like, you're wearing a rainproof coat with yeah, highly visibility. Yeah, it's a Shouse Pass. Uh, I love the name alone. Uh, they were just reasonably priced, and they work great. I've had them for about a year, and um, yeah, keep me dry. You got your helmet. You got your waterproof pants, and then Helly Hansen rain boots. I haven't. I haven't found the right shoe yet um they're all like super expensive um or um they just like i've tried covers for shoes and things like that but that's just yeah. a cover uh, it's more like a wetsuit so uh this is the only kind of impermeable solution that doesn't kind of drive me nuts can i see your pedal you take your oh, foot yeah. off those are the stock pedals do you find that you slip off of them sometimes have you thought about changing to like metal or I haven't yet i have some metal on another bike i use for deliveries and that one uh, stabs me a lot in the in the in the, uh, in the shin all kinds of uh yeah on the uh, exactly, just like above the, the shoe, kind of where the first part of the sock would be. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of like scars all over my, my, my ankles and uh, shins and it's, uh, this is nice because it doesn't stab me. Okay, well yeah, that's that's good to know. Like I call that out sometimes and it's a trade off. Like yeah. you're gonna grip, but you're gonna get scraped up a right. little bit that way. And again, just a, a sweet setup. How long have you had uh, your Risa Miller? Um, we're now, so it's about three months. Wow. Yeah, this is my first Risa Miller and it's not my last. Okay, do you have yeah. any other call outs? It doesn't have to be positive. Is there anything you change or what's your experience been? Um, I've, I've just, I've really enjoyed having the twin batteries. That's that's made uh, that's taking right, the whole battery aspect. I, I wanted to show, look at this. He's got the bottle cage. He's got the folding lock on the right. And then over here on the left, you've got the, the additional battery. Yeah. So it's worth the money, yeah? Yeah, especially because of the extra load I'm taking and, and having extra load means you're going to drain more battery. And so it just takes the whole thought out of it. Uh, it's 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 like when we used to have really crappy phones and then we got the new phones yeah. and like now they last forever. Yeah. Okay. This is fantastic. Well, I, I didn't mean to rush you. I know you're on your way to yeah, totally. to do a delivery, but great to see you. See you, Scott. See you soon. Ride safe. How cool is that? Like, that was totally <laughs> spontaneous. Let's hop back on the bike and, and get going. You're attached to the rack stay. Okay. So you are going to be steady. You're sprung, and you're going to be able to see that rear swing arm going up and down as we hit some bumps. Uh, also, you'll be able to see that the shifting and listen for shift detection as we ride. with traffic so you can get some idea of what it might be like commuting especially and rush hour environment with some lights you know it's we're getting into dusk this is kind of real world in New York City in Brooklyn but it is a protected bike lane which is nice <laughs>
cool bike rack. Brooklyn Navy Yard looks like a ship. Too big and heavy to, to dismantle and unscrew because sometimes that's what they do. They steal the whole bike rack with the bikes on it. And it just fits the theme and you know, a lot of construction going on around here. Retrofitting some of the older buildings and creating some new incubator spaces. That's where Chris works. It's something called the New Lab. Just a fantastic space. Uh, really fortunate to get to check it out. That was a lot of fun. We got a little bit wet, but I think it was worth it. You know? Say, yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. Again, Chris from Propel in Brooklyn. It's it's awesome to have two bikes that are like thousands of dollars each, you know, like next to each other and getting to show them and show the differences, the colors and stuff. Um, it's it's this bike on its own with just one battery is awesome. Um, you know, we reviewed it separately before and we talk about the new Vinci and the belt drive and everything, but I think they did a really fantastic job. Um, again, I think one of the advantages of the derailleur and the sprockets is like that faster shifting, a little bit lighter. It's right. that high performance experience. Right, absolutely. Uh, and, and I do notice it, like it feels a little racier on this bike. Anyway, for all the specs and photos and comments and everything, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Please chime in if you've had experience with this bike, you have any questions or you want to call out something we missed. Uh, otherwise, have fun, ride safe.